We're going to be talking about Chrysler's Serial Communications Interface, also known as SCI. Now, it is not a standard ISO 9141, and it has to be covered separate from the ISO 9141 for European and Asian cars because they're fairly universal. This is unique. It's for scan tool and module communications, basically for that and for programming, flash programming under J2534. It's a parallel circuit, meaning it's got two wires, an SCI transmit and an SCI received. It runs at 62.5 kilobaud, and as we said, it's a variation 9141. The system operates on a request response basis. This means if you're going to test the signals, the scan tool must be connected and be communicating. As we show here in this diagram, the request is made by supplying the PCM with a keyword, and it's, the scan tool is going to use ground on the transmit side on the left to do that. And this is what we start seeing on the two wires once we see stuff starting to happen. We start seeing two channels of scope with information. Chrysler uses SCI for scan data and reprogramming and for interfacing with the transmission. As we said before, what does two wires mean or parallel mean? It means it's two wires. We've got a transmit and receive circuit, and we're going to talk about each one of them. This is an example of SCI for engine transmission along with PCI in the shaded area. The bottom part, unshaded, is the grounds and the SCI transmit and receive. Now, some things like ABS reside on both the SCI and the PCI bus. As you see coming in that block we're pointing to, it goes down here to the transmission receive on the SCI, and it also goes up to the PCI bus with all the other things above it. But we're going to focus right now in this section just on SCI. This is the typical configuration of what you're going to be seeing. The PCM is on the right over here, and it's going to go to the data link connector, DLC. Now, it, the DLC, if you notice, is named the same as the PCM signals. We're going to remind you of that later. You see the two pins we're talking about here. It's six and seven on this vehicle. Remember the bear in the woods? This is not standard. Get a specific diagram. The scan tool is on the left and it's going to plug into our DCL. Now we can measure the signal of the DCL by going in here. We can't do it directly on the DCL. We've got to do something in between. It, the scan tool must be connected. Therefore, we can't be looking at these same two pins. So what we're going to have to do is go in there. And keep in mind, the labels on the PCM are the same as the labels on the data link connector, which are the opposite of what the labels are on the scan tool. Here's how we really have to measure it. If we're going to use probes without a breakout box like we have, we have to go in the back and insert probes in the back of the, d the data link connector because we can't look at it from the front. We have the, p the scan tool connected in so we can communicate. Here's one of the most useful things we have. It's something we picked up several years ago. It's a breakout box and lets us get in and do things. But if you have to, go to the back and plug in here. This is where you're going to have to connect your equipment. And this is what you're going to see. Now, we have a movie of this so you can see it actually moving. And you can stop and have a look at it and see that this is not a nice signal. Communications happens in burst. Something happens, then it sends information back. And what we're doing here is the scan tool is sending information on the transmit side, or on the receive side, and the PCM is sending out stuff on the transmit side. So you're going to be seeing two different bursts, and as you see, they have no direct relationship to each other. Let's go look at that movie and see how this jumps around, because transmissions like this happen in data bursts, not steady streams of information. And what you want to notice is that the two channels have independent of each other. One is not a mirror image or any ray related to the other one. They may be related with communications, but not directly to the information on either one of them. They're both sending independent. This is called parallel transmission, meaning the two channels do stuff. Notice we have quiet periods where there's no communications. They start up again. Be prepared to see this kind of action on your lab scope 
It's not always going to be a nice, steady, smooth pattern that sits there and repeats over and over. So now you should have a pretty good idea of how all this is going to look on your lab scope. There are times when we're going to get a different pattern. Here is what you're going to see with the scan tool disconnected. SCI receive from the computer is zero. SCI transmit is five volts. Now that tells us we have continuity back to the PCM on the transmit side. This is what the circuit looks like. Let's put the circuits back in there when the scan tool is connected. Notice that the 5 volts for the SCI received, the blue line, comes from a 5 volt pull up inside the scan tool. The 5 volts for the SCI transmit in red connects to a 5 volt pull up in the PCM. And these guys are going to be toggling their grounds. So this gives us some troubleshooting hints by getting to this level. When it's hooked up, we go to get, getting data like this. How do we get there? Well, the 5 volts got to be supplied on both sides. And the ground is supplied on the opposite side. So here are the two 5 volts in the scan tool. And then here we are with our signals. They're going to be pulled low. Communications takes place when the 5 volt signal is pulled low. We talked about that before. We're going to spend more time talking about it. How do we pull it low? Well, there is the transmit. The transmit side has a switch to ground, and it's like a telegraph, telegraphing out the messages. There are two channels, independent of each other, but they have similar operating characteristics. When we have a transmit, like on the left here, opening and closing, plus supplying ground, we can read it on the SCI receive at the PCM. Same thing going the opposite direction. When we ground and unground on SCI transmit, the scan tools receive circuit, picks it up and reads it. They are variable pulse width signals, meaning the pulses are not all the same width as you look at them. They look like they're jumping around as you saw in the live scope patterns. Now, these all represent highs and lows, and if we wanted to get into the details, we could set down and say, now a low is a zero and five volts is one. This is dominant low, mm, just so you know that. Dominant in this particular case is a zero. Double width changes meanings. But when we decode this, we have zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, 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 and it means absolutely nothing. So we're not going to try to decode it. We're going to talk about some of the actors. As the duration changes, it changes values and they're inverted and we're going to talk about that more later. So we just said this means nothing. What you're going to use is a scan tool. The scan tool can interpret the data. If you can't communicate, you can't see it, but let the scan tool try to talk and do the communications for you. But let's look at pet value patterns and what these signals can tell us. We're looking at the signals right here. We're looking at one coming from the scan tool and one coming from the PCM. The PCM supplies 5 volts, it's grounded on the other side. The scan tool supplies 5 volts, it's grounded on the other side. That's what generates the two signals. The red signal gets 5 volts in the scan tool. What does that tell us? If that 5 volts is missing, that gives us a failure pattern. If the 5 volts in the PCM is missing, that gives us a failure pattern. Looking at the receive circuit, it goes from 5 to 0 volts. If it stays 5 volts hung high, it's never pulled the ground. What do you think might be the problem? It's never going to ground. It's always hung high. Here's a failure pattern for us. Look. To pull the receive low, remember, the DCL, DLC, is identical in nomenclature to the PCM. It says the scan tool is not pulling it low. Check for an open circuit, broken wire, something wrong with the scan tool. Do you have the right adapter installed so that it can interface to the right number of pins? The reason you got to use all those adapters, guys, is these pin numbers still moving around. Different adapters do different things. If the signal's always high and the scan tool's cable aren't the problem, suspect you have a bad scan tool. 
it's that clear. If it's missing, always low, we go the opposite direction. Always low tells us we're not getting 5 volts. We must not be connected to the PCM or the DCL is connected and it's pulled low. Now, if we disconnect it and it's low when it's plugged in, high when we disconnect it, look what that's telling you. Always low when we're connected. Goes high when we disconnect it. Disconnect the scan tool, see if it goes high. Guess what? That's telling us the scan tool is pulling it low. We are connected to the PCM because when we disconnect it, it goes high. This is a failure pattern. On the receive side, it's high when it's disconnected, low when we have the scan tool connected. If the signal returns to 5 volts with the scan tool disconnected, check for a short to ground in the scan tool's cable or the scan tool itself. You have a problem in that area. It is not in the PCM. Now, if the signal doesn't return to 5 volts with the scan tool disconnected, we have to go from the data link connector back to the SCI and see what's going on. So we check the wire from the PCM with the circuit open. If the signal doesn't return to 5 volts with the scan tool disconnected, check for 5 volts at the PCM. If it isn't there, diagnose the PCM. We have a problem. We don't have good contact on that pin C329 on this particular vehicle modification. Or something's gone wrong inside our PCM. Now, we're going to go test 7. It's just the opposite. Let's look at 7 and understand the rules. The 5 volts is going to come from the scan tool. It's going to be pulled to ground by the PCM. We begin to see the logic of this diagnosis. The 5 volts is created by a pull-up side inside the scan tool. It is responsible for that level. If it's always there from the scan tool, that says we have continuity back to the scan tool. If it isn't present, check the scan tool and the cable for an open circuit. It's that simple. Now, if it's always low, disconnect the scan tool and check for 5 volts at scan tool connector. It could be being pulled low. Ah, it stays low. Gives us an answer. We know what to go. Look at pin 7. Do you have it there? Boom. You don't. Now, this is the opposite of pin 7 on the uh, PCI, on the DCL, DLC connector. So we're just showing you. It's a mirror image. If the 5 volts is present out of the scan tool and is always low, when you connect it up to the system, check for a short to ground between pin 7 and the DCL, DLC. Notice we have a short in this circuit. It's in a wiring problem. If the wire isn't the problem, the PCM driver is shorted and is always pulling at the ground. Now we got here by using failure pattern analysis. We did this quickly, but in a video you can always go back and review it. So go back and study this. But now this takes care of all of the circuit problems. If they can't communicate and the signals are good, then go to the PCM testing and start testing the PCM because we've got, we, we know the war circuit was good. Everything should be working. We have good signals. We can't read it. If it can't read it, check for TSBs and then go and check to see if you have a bad PCM. Ford and Chrysler will use versions of SCI for intermodule communications. The voltage values are different. They tend to be around battery voltage and they don't have to be connected to a scan tool to work. They're always working when the systems are plugged in. This is just a hint for you that it is used in other places, but this is predominantly used here in Chrysler. Now, any questions? If you have questions about this, go back and review this section. Make sure you understand how we're testing it. I know we went through it fast, but if we don't go through it very quickly, it gets to be boring. Go back, review any parts you need to study. Take time to make sure you understand the section on failure patterns and understand that section so you know who's at fault. Hit the pause button and stop it if you need to go run a test and then come back and finish the test later.